Hello, everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing well. My name is Serenity, for those of you who don't know, and I'm here with another video. So this video is going to be about basically demons. Yes, I said it, demons. It's not to scare you. It's just to let you know the secrets of yourself, how you were made, and why this male entity God, this father God, can exploit you and your weaknesses to his advantage. So that's why I'm doing this video, because if you know, you can actually do something about it so you are not influenced as much with this evil presence that permeates the world, okay? So what I'm going to do is actually refer to a parable that Jesus mentioned in Matthew. And that's in Matthew chapter 12, 43 through 45. And I'll read that. And I'm going to read it out of the New King James Version this time. So that's Matthew chapter 12, 43 through 45. And that says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. So here, it might be confusing, but basically what it's saying is this house is actually you, your soul, your being. And when one spirit, very mild, I should put it, leaves, and due to environmental circumstances, um, basically your self-worth, confidence, um, and love of self, is gone. Essentially, you are empty. So once these things are gone from, from your being, it actually makes room for even more evil spirits to inhabit your being or your house. This is what Jesus was talking about in this parable. So essentially, yes, it is demon possession. Um, and this demon possession, depending on the level will lead to different levels of narcissists. Yeah. Like I said, if you know, at least you can do something about it. So narcissists are possessed by evil spirits. I would like to say it's not true, but it is the truth. So basically, the less love that you have for yourself, the easier it is for these evil spirits to inhabit or transfer to our bodies and basically they take over that good or that light that we have within us they literally siphon it are able to enter us and essentially survive because you have to remember satan this father god or jehovah as i mentioned in another video they are all the same has been thrown down to earth. He cannot come and go, and neither can these evil spirits. They do not have a physical body. They have to inhabit other physical beings in order to have a home, essentially. That is what it is. So with this knowledge that you now have, you can understand why Jehovah's Witnesses love to instill guilt, shame, inadequacy, like you can never do enough, fear, not just fear of being punished or disciplined in their congregation, but fear of the world in general that we live in. All of these, as well as other aspects, 
break down that light within an individual. And they want that light broken down. So this rebel God can have bodies for his helpers or supporters. Yeah. This is why it works so well in this organization, but it also works well on a global scale. It's not just this religion in general, but they have it basically, they're professionals. They know what works and they use those tactics within their organization to get these people in and then let these spirits inhabit their bodies. That's why it's almost impossible to wake other Jehovah's Witnesses up because they are under this satanic influence. And I know it's hard to hear, but I can't lie. It's the truth. That's why in one of my stories, I cried when I said it's hard, you know, to leave the organization, but even harder to speak up because I realize what you, all of you who have left this organization have escaped. You should be proud of yourselves and grateful, really. Now, if you know what a narcissist is, you know they lie, but they also try to demean and devalue the person that they're trying to break down, essentially. And they won't just do it by themselves. They'll have other people come in and do this also, which is flying monkeys which is why the group guilt trips work so well on people <laughs> as well in, in the Jehovah's Witness organization. It is not by accident. It is very strategized to be effective. This rebel God knows what works and he puts those tactics into play. So once you can be emotionally and mentally broken down, it makes it easy for you to essentially be inhabited or these evil energies transferred to you. So you are no longer the person that you used to be. Basically, you'll feel this dark cloud, this depression, um, and it seems like the whole world will be against you. This is especially what takes place with children which is why they instill this in children from a very young age in this, this organization. Also, other aspects, not just in this religion, but in society as well. They try to start with children to get them to have a low self-esteem, low self-worth, to become inhabited as well. That is the, the purpose of this rebel God who is leading the world at this time. So, for instance, this may be hard to hear, but me and the true God are aware of what goes on. We are. So I know some of you have been raped. You've been sexually abused or assaulted. You've been physically abused, verbally abused, mentally abused emotionally abused. And a lot of times it's usually by those who are supposed to love us the most. Once again, this is not by accident. You did absolutely nothing wrong to deserve that treatment. We want you to know that. There is nothing wrong with you. You are beautiful in the true God's eyes. Just remember that. But all these tactics usually used on children, very young children, are not by accident. It's this evil God and all his evil helpers, forces, demons, essentially, trying to put out your light. And the earlier they can do that, the more control they have over your mind and your body and they're able to gain control of you. So you essentially become puppets for these evil spirits. 
So that's why a lot of times in my videos, I constantly say love, love, love. But first of all, love yourself. You have to accept you for who you are. All those things that happen to you, you have to acknowledge them. Learn the lesson from them, but get it out of your system. Because that is what allows all this negativity to inhabit your body. And in turn, you will spread that negativity to others. That's why once you understand true love and you heal, because that's what will heal you, is understanding your self-worth and your value once you truly love yourself. You will heal and then be able to spread that love to others. And that is what is going to essentially save this world because if enough people love themselves and there is no place for these evil spirits to inhabit them, they no longer have a home and humans will not behave as badly as they are currently. So that's it in a nutshell. Hopefully I explained it well. You don't have to believe it, but once again, if you do realize what's going on around you, it will help put all of these pieces together in order for you to actually have a better life. Okay, <laughs> so that's all I have for you today. Um, I think I'm gonna leave a, a song, yes, a song in the comment because mother wants me to. She wants me to convey to you how much you mean to her. Since she obviously can't come down and speak herself, that's what I'm doing for her. <laughs> so that's what I'll do in the comment section. You can listen to it if you want, but this is what mother wants you to know, apparently, okay? All right, we love you. Once again, take care of yourself and do not let all the things that happen to you in life make you think that you are not worth something or valuable because you are precious. Okay, take care. Bye.